Hi everybody and thank you for joining me today. My name is John Altman. I am the International Director of Education for Colors by Gina and today's class is on natural copper. So copper, I teach about this all the time. You guys have watched a few of my videos and copper is always red and gold. Red and gold makes our copper. But there's different types of copper, and today I want to talk about those. So with the different types of copper, you're going to have your smoky copper, which is going to be a new trend in 2024. It's going to be the deeper root with the lighter ends, and it's going to be more of a natural on the ends and just something a little bit brighter on the root. You're also going to have your true copper. True copper is going to be more of your plain copper. It's going to have more gold to it, so what that's going to do is make a brighter, more brilliant copper. Also, we have natural copper. Natural copper to a lot of people can be tricky. It's very simple. It reminds me a lot of the cowgirl copper I believe we had last year. So cowgirl copper, what was it? It was honestly just your copper and your natural. Okay, so natural copper is gonna have mostly copper tones to it, but with a natural base. So with that, it's going to give you more of a subtle copper that is wearable and livable. And also, it's going to last a long time because it doesn't have as much pigment of the copper in it. Now, we all know red likes to fade out a lot. But with Colors by Gina, we really don't have that problem. We have the micro-pigmented uh, micro pigments, which will actually kind of join like a fence inside of that hair strand. It's going to hold that copper in there, and it's going to hold any type of red or any color. With that, it doesn't fade as much. So you're gonna have less fadage plus a brilliant co color to go with. Now let's get started with this. Now first thing I like to start with is the four basic steps of coloring. Okay, so step one, what is our natural level? Percentage of gray and what is the underlying pigment? With our mannequin today, her natural level is a seven. Underlying pigment at a level seven would be gold. But if you look at her hair, cause mannequins are a little bit different and so are people she has a lot of red to it already. She already has that deep warm base. So with that deep warm base, I have to keep that in mind when I'm formulating. Also, she has maybe a couple strands of gray because you know, that's how it happens, but that's not enough to worry about. So we're not gonna have to put that into our formulation. Now, desired level. She wants to stay around a seven. Natural copper is around a seven or eight. So it's gonna be a very beautiful, light brown to medium brown color. With her, we are going to now think of our formulations because of step three. Step three is going to be how do we formulate her? Now, with a mannequin head, she already has plenty of natural in her hair. Mannequin hair also does not lift. So I already have my natural in there. So I need to try to brighten that up by using my seven copper, 7.4. And a little trick that I've learned to give it that nice deepness and richness of the copper is to use a little bit of seven red, so 7.6. Also now we gotta think about the timing. Colors by Gina, we only have to do permanent hair color for 35 minutes. If this was five volume demi-permanent hair color, we would only have to do this for 20 minutes. Mix and ratios are one to one and a half for permanent and one to two for demi-permanent. So let's get to mixing this color. Now, I always suggest, and Colors by Gina always suggests and says, you should weigh your color. Why do we weigh our color? You get the same result every single time. How many times have you got a new client and said, every time my old hairdresser did my hair, it was something just a slightly different, and they weren't happy with that. When you weigh your color, you're going to get the, sp the same color every single time. And that's why it's so important to make sure you know exactly what you're putting in their hair. So starting off, I am going to go ahead and use my 7.4 in our three ounce tubes. You know I love that those three ounce tubes. I'm going to do two thirds of 7.4. Now when I show you this color, you'll see that it's already copper coming out of the tube. See as I was saying, already copper coming out of the tube. Now we're going to use our 7.6. One thing I love about Colors by Gina is how pigmented it is. They do have two to 3% more pigment than most brands. So that's gonna give you a lot more brilliant shine, brilliant color that will last longer. Now this is one third of the 7.6 or seven red. 
And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to give it a little bit more depth to it, just because we both know this is not going to lift because it's color. So color cannot lift color. So I need to brighten it and I need to make sure that we get that beautiful color I'm looking for. Also with our color or any color, I always suggest you have two different pigments inside your bowl. Mix those together previous to putting in your color producer. Color producer will kind of make it clump up a little bit because it's separate pigments. So you wanna mix those pigments together first and just make a beautiful, easy, stirring color. So now I'm gonna use 20 volume. Why 20 volume? Because she's a mannequin. I wanna make sure that we get some nice, brilliant color in that hair. So I wanna just kinda of try to lift it a little bit and just push that color right in. And remember, this is mixed one to one and a half. Now I'm gonna mix this up. And one thing I've always liked to do is I do use a lot of brushes a lot of brushes because after I'm done mixing, I always want to take a new brush to be able to apply it on the color or on the head. Reason for that, I like to work clean, especially when you're working around the scalp area here. If you have a messy brush, you're just going to get color everywhere and you got to be careful of that. So I always will use a clean brush afterwards. Now we're going to start with our app application. With well, the application, what I like to do is be very clean, especially around the face. And then we're gonna do the roots. We're gonna then pull through the ends and do the ends at the same time. I always say I like to work clean. So I have a towel to wipe my hands off during each section because I don't wanna get this all over her. Plus on a client, we do have those handy little wipes that are gonna wipe it off. On the mannequin, we don't. Plus, and if it's a new client, you wanna make sure that you work clean for them. So I'm going to start this off and then go from section one and go all around the head. Of course, applying at the root first and then through the ends. We're going to start this application with just a little bit of color on the brush. With that, then I can go right around the hairline, a little bit above the scalp. And then we're going to push it right into the scalp just to make sure we have those clean areas. I know I was always taught that you have to outline your section first. Maybe that's really old school, but I love to do that because then it gives me the workspace that I need for each section. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and go right in there, get into that root. One other thing that you can do there with this color formulation, when you're using your seven copper and you want a little bit of that red, you can always use your pure mixers. We have pure mixers that are amazing. They're high quality, uh, high pigment. So you're gonna get this beautiful pigment that you can put in there with only about an inch, inch and a half. And that will give you that red that you need to put into that copper to give it that depth and brightness. One thing to remember is copper is reflective because of all the gold. So that is gonna give you more of a lighter looking color. When you add in that red, the red is actually gonna make it just a little bit deeper and give you just a little bit different of a color. When I look at natural copper, natural redheads, I always see a little bit more red in that copper than just copper itself. And that's because in the human body, we have copper and red in our natural pigment. You also have the gold. So it's a beautiful natural color that you don't get to see very often on everyone. Now we're just gonna go ahead and finish up these roots. And then after that, I'm probably gonna have to clean her forehead because I did get a little bit messy on there. I've been doing hair over 20 years and you still are gonna be just a little messy. So I'll take that towel that I was talking about. We're just gonna wipe that off real quick. Okay, so the rest is boring to you because I am just going to apply this color all over this head. So let's just hit fast forward on this.
Now that the color is fully applied to the roots and the ends, she's gonna sit for 35 minutes and then shampoo condition. I'll blow dry her and bring her back for you guys to see the final result. The thing that I also remembered while I was doing this, make sure to take those small sections. We've all seen it, we've all done it. You've accidentally not gotten the hair because it is too thick of a section. I can admit, I've done it plenty of times because you're in a hurry. But one thing to make sure is take those small, precise sections so that you get that cover coverage in there and you want that even beautiful color. So I will go ahead and rinse her here soon and then I will show you the final result. Now we have set for 35 minutes for the processing time. And if you remember, it was one third of the 7.6, two thirds of 7.4, on the brown hair. Okay, so that is mixed one to one and a half with a 20 volume, because I really wanted to kind of pick that up and really bring it back up for you. And you can see it's a nice level seven. Of course, with a level seven, the copper is gonna be more of a rich tone. And then that little bit of red that we add in there is really just gonna give it more of that vibrancy, but also the deeper, truer tone. Now, copper is very many different varieties, of course. So when you're thinking copper, if you want more of an orangey look, you're going to have to do more of a gold mixed with a copper. We also have that series. So we have an 843 and a 734 along with a 643. Those are going to be your brighter coppers. That's going to give you that more orangey tone and a little bit more pizzazz to it. Where you go into your natural coppers of 7.4, 6.4, and 8.4, you're going to see more of that true tone. Now, also with her, the one thing that I love about it is you can really kind of see, nobody is really, you have those, you do have natural coppers that are going to be more orangey, and then you have the ones that have just more of that beautiful red base, but it's still the copper, okay? So that is going to be more of your natural coppers. And just remember, like I said, always take a look at people's pictures when they come in when they're talking copper. Because of the multiple varieties of it, there can be an orangey copper, more natural copper, or even more of a brown copper. So we always have to think of that as stylist, is when we want to do this color for a client, what do they see? So always make sure you have pictures available or that they have pictures available when you are going with the coppers. Thank you so much for joining me today and hopefully you've got something from this class. And hopefully you will still join us every two weeks here on the Colors by Gina YouTube channel where we have classes for you. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you next time.